Let's create a new script called flexible UI button and then open it up. And again, let's make sure we get rid of the uh, update uh, and the start. We'll inherit from flexible UI and we'll also add Unity engine .ui into our usings. We'll be sure to require a button component and also an image component. And then if we simply go back into Unity and create a canvas, and then an empty game object and add our button to it, we can see that it creates an object with an image and a button and our custom script, which we can define our skin onto. So let's do that. And now we need to start defining some information for our button to be skinned with. So let's go to our flexible UI data. We'll also add unity engine.ui to our usings in here as well and create a public sprite called button sprite and we'll create a sprite state called button sprite state then in our inspector we can create this information so our scriptable object should now show the button sprite so let's call that this one which is the gray one and then the highlighted sprite will be the slightly lighter version. The pressed sprite will be the flat one. And then the uh, transparent one can be the disabled sprite. We'll save that. From here, we now just need to set our custom script up so that it gets the information from our scriptable object. Back in our flexible UI button class, let's create an instance of the image and of the button. And then let's override our on skin UI class. So we now need to define our image variable by getting the component on the game object. Same with the button as well. So we can control both of those. And then let's set our button up to be a sprite swap so we set the transition to sprite swap and let's set the target graphic on our button to be our image then all we need to do is define the data for the sprite by using the information set inside of our scriptable object so let's set the image dot sprite to be skin data dot button sprite and then let's set the sprite state on the button to inherit from the button sprite state in our scriptable object. And if we save that and go back to Unity, we should notice that our button has updated to get the information from our scriptable object. And if we go back onto our scriptable object and we change the default sprite, you can see that it actually automatically updates because the script is executing in edit mode. And if we then play, we can see that the behavior on our button acts accordingly. So we have a nice little up, down, and over state because of what we've defined in our scriptable object. So now the only issue is that when we scale the button, it doesn't scale properly. Uh, and we end up with this horrible looking button. So we want to make sure that regardless of how the scale looks, it still fits right. And so we know we're using slice sprites for the UI. So let's add a line to our button to make sure that it displays sprites correctly. So let's go to image dot type equals image dot type dot sliced. Now we can scale a button however we like, and it updates and draws accordingly, which is great. Now, if we play, we can see that the image is displayed correctly and the sprite swap. We have a button that has its behavioral data mostly separated from its design. 
we can actually change the scriptable object while the game is running and see how those changes will affect our design. And we can also duplicate the button as many times as we like, changing its size, and then update our skin to have them all update at the same time and still behave as normal, which is great. So we're nearly there. This is a good starting point for us and it gives you an idea of what you can create using this workflow, but there's still some more we can do to this to make this as a really useful and flexible UI system.